Yo, it's Rob here from Show Showdown. Today, we're gonna be finding the strongest Jujutsu Kaisen characters, or we Lu. Last time we talked about One Piece. Listen, guys, I am finally caught up to the JJK manga, so we are going to be covering up to chapter 258. The Discord is now live. Please click the link in the description down below to join. Let's get right into it, y'all. First matchup, we have Hana Kurusu going up against Choso. This is interesting. Choso, obviously being Yuji Itadori's brother, having access to piercing blood, having experience boxing against Kenjaku. He even was in the final with Sukuna as well but when you're looking at Hana Kurusu you can also mention that the hacks that she has access to are of elite status she is the reason why Gojo was freed from the prison realm she's also the reason why Yuto is able to stun Sukuna within his domain with the Jacob's ladder technique that he copied from her from a hack standpoint it's Hana from a physical ability standpoint it's Choso it really comes down to what you need from this type of situation but I think I'm gonna give Hana the benefit of the doubt just because I don't think Choso has a move in his art that is comparable to the likes of Jacob's Ladder. I'm going with Hana. Maki Zenin going up against Masamichi Yaga. There was a point in time, y'all, where we had respect for Principal Yaga. And I'm not even gonna say that he's weak, even though Gakuganji is the one that took him out. We get there was obviously an executive order, but Maki is literally Toji 2.0. I personally believe nothing further needs to be said for this matchup. We'll talk about Maki later when she has better competition. Higuruma going up against Jogo. Jogo is special grade. Jogo was boxing against the Sakuna, but it was not the Sakuna that we are seeing currently in the manga right now. The Sakuna that we are seeing is basically almost fully realized. He's full powered up and everything has completely transformed after he was boxing with Gojo, after he boxed with almost everybody. That was the Sakuna that Higuruma had to deal with. When Higuruma cast his judgment, there's a chance that you can get the death penalty as punishment, which means you're getting the executioner's sword, which means if you get one tapped, you die. Even though Jogo is special grade, the fact that Higuruma was able to unlock reverse curse technique in his battle against Sakuna? I'm going with Higuruma. Itadori Yuji going up against Hanyu. This is a clear fodder type matchup currently. Obviously, Hanyu had some respect in the early, early scenes of the culling games, but where we are right now, Yuji would just black flash Hanyu into oblivion. Next, we have Kokichi Muta going up against Genichi Zeni. So we know that Muta is obviously the puppet master behind Mekamaru. Obviously, Mekamaru's techniques were ridiculous, but we do also have to look at it from this perspective. Mekamaru broke out all the stops against the likes of Mahito, the simple domain, the ultimate Mekamaru, the bigger version of himself, all of these things, and it did not work. Genichi had to go up against the Toji 2.0 in Maki two completely different levels of opponents. It's tough because if this is a conversation about Maki versus Mahito, I'm clearly going with Maki. But am I lowballing Janichi because of the power gap between him and Maki? I think Janichi had a tougher matchup, but I did not see any simple domains. I don't believe Janichi has the bag that Muta has at full power. I think I'm gonna go with Muta here. Next up, we have Geto going up against Takaba. Honestly, this one is ridiculously tough because we know Geto is special grade, but Geto did end up losing to Yuta. Fumihiko is in a situation where he boxed against Kenjaku and he did lose, but he does also not like to kill people. We do know that. That was also stated by Yuta, but there's also something that Takaba has access to which is ridiculous and that is his comedian curse technique it literally allows him to manipulate reality to things that he thinks are funny it pretty much is a watered down version of a gag character i personally don't know if ghetto has an answer with his curse manipulation to combat against takaba's comedian technique just seeing that kenjaku in his body wasn't able to do that but we do know that fumihiko does not like to finish off his opponents so that may be something that ghetto can exploit i don't know takaba can actually heal himself without using reverse curse technique I might have to go with the comedian. I might have to go with Fumihiko on this one, man. This is tough, though. Next up, we have Druv going up against Uro. Now, I personally believe this is a clean stomp for Uro. Uro's curse technique allows her to actually rip and throw the sky. She makes the sky become a surface, and we've seen that Yuta was able to copy this ability, and it was very useful in his fight against Sukuna. Druv, to me, is somebody that is just another Shikigami user, but he's of a lower tier. Yuta packed him up easily. I'm not worried about him at all. I'm going with Uro. Ogi going up against Ichi. 
Ishigori. Ogi is definitely in competition for one of the worst fathers in anime, but we'll get to that later. He is clearly a very powerful swordsman in the Zenin clan, but once Maki was able to power up, it was pretty much a done deal. He had no answers for her and she cleaned him up quickly. When you're looking at somebody like Ryu Ishigori, for one, we know he has access to domain expansion, but he was used it at the same time as Yuta and Udo used theirs, so it obviously clashed and canceled out. But we do know that his granite blast techniques are pretty much like Kamehameha waves in the JJK verse. It's ridiculous. He could just blast out cursed energy and he was boxing with the likes of Yuta. I don't see Ogi Zenin doing that at all. I'm going with Ishigori. Dagon going up against Uraume. Considering that Uraume is able to use ice curse techniques and is able to box with the likes of Hikari, I gotta drop Dagon off, man. I'm going with Uraume. Panda going up against Momo. The fact that Panda survived in a battle against Kashimo is all you really need to know. Imagine Momo in a fight against Kashimo. It would be done in 30 seconds or less. Panda got to survive and tell the story. Now, obviously, Hakari stepped into the building and he was boxing with Kashimo, which helped save Panda. But I don't think Momo would have lasted waiting for Hakari to get there. I'm going with Panda. Panda's incredible. Next, we have Kusakabe going up against Naobito. Y'all know exactly who I'm going with. The person that Gojo, Nanami, Meimei have all co-signed. They champion him. The person whose simple domain was able to draw in Sakuna so he can land an attack. The person whose cursed technique knowledge is of high status. His intellect is out of this world. He was literally the main strategist for their fight against Sakuna. I'm going with Kasakabe 100%. Yuki going up against Mahito. No questions. You have to go with the special grade sorcerer that was able to box with Kenjaku. 100% Yuki's fire. Daido going up against Eso. Considering that Eso got packed up early on and Daido was very, very critical in the fight against Noya Zenin's curse. I'm going with Daido. Next, we have Megami going up against Mio. We know Mio is a sumo wrestler, has the sumo domain expansion technique that he was able to use against Maki, which helped Maki actually get stronger. So we have to give him some credit there. But with this treasure, I summon. Next. Next, we have Nabara going up against the Grasshopper curse. I'm going with Nabara on this one. I think the Grasshopper curse is not anything that crazy. Hanami going up against Kechizu. Hanami was going crazy. Even Yuji and Toto teaming up together was not able to take down Hanami. You actually had to get Gojo to use Hollow Purple. Got to talk about Hanami. Norotoshi Kamo going up against Yorozu. Obviously, we love Kamo. He has the arrows from fighting from long range, and he can also use blood manipulation and all of that stuff. Yorozu, even though she's crazy as all hell, is ridiculous. She was one of the first major opponents for Sukuna. They obviously have history. Her curse technique allows her to create anything that she knows a composition of so she decides to create liquid metal so she could box from close range and long range and then she's also found the best attributes of insects to create her personal armor and her curse energy is no joke either kama will get packed up in under 30 seconds i'm going with yorozu toge going up against juzo uh toge gakuganji going up against kenjaku no questions we love gakuganji but kenjaku is clapping yuta going up against toto boogie woogie didn't even get a chance to breathe toto had to go all out against Mahito and lost. Yuta would clap Mahito. I'm going with Yuta. Noya Zenin in cursed mode going up against Haruta. Haruta has no shot against Noya Zenin. Even Nanami was making Haruta look light. I'm going with Noya Zenin. Hakari going up against Ino. Restless gambler. All right. Going with Hakari. My Zenin going up against Smallpox Deity. Considering that the Smallpox Deity was boxing against Mei Mei and Ui Ui at the same time and was able to force Ui Ui to use simple domain mean that's already 20 times the feats that we've seen from mine i'm going with smallpox deity next we have kirara hoshi going up against gojo honestly just an unfortunate matchup because kirara hoshi is actually really really good but once you figure out their curse technique with the constellations that megami was able to figure out i mean gojo wouldn't even have to deal with all that gojo would just clap instantly going with gojo miwa going up against junpei <laughs> clearly miwa simple domain junpei will get clapped in two seconds charles bernard going up against maharaga listen charles is a problem with the g war staff he's able to look into the future now initially it's only really one second into the future it's really only one manga panel's worth but as he draws more blood he's able to look further into the future but that's big raga yeah. the same maharaga that was boxing against sukuna the same maharaga that was boxing against gojo when sukuna obviously took over mega 
Megumi's body. Even though Charles had a good showing against Hikari, I'm going with Maharaga, personally. Nanami going up against Toji. Clearly, this is Toji. Even though we love Nanami, Toji is just that guy. Reggie Star going up against Kurorushi. Now, as we know, Reggie was able to box against Megumi. He has the ability to recreate anything that is on contracts or even receipts. But boxing against Megumi and boxing against Yuta are two different scenarios. And we know that Kurorushi was very, very problematic for Yuta. Now, we do have to understand that when Yuta first encountered Kurorushi, he did not have access to Rika right away because Rika was protecting other people and he also was trying to hold back his positive curse energy as well. But Kurodushi forced his hand and made him power up even more. And he caused Rika to pull up. So I gotta go with Kurodushi. Registar does not require Yuta to bring Rika into this situation at all. Mei Mei going up against Jito. Mei Mei uses crows and puts curse energy in them and is able to box from close range and long range with a battle axe. But on the flip side, Jito has inverse. So if you attack with stronger power, he feels less damage vice versa. I think Jiro's personally at a bigger disadvantage here because once you figure out his gimmick, it's pretty much easy to beat him. Mei Mei, it takes a little bit more to figure out. And I think Mei Mei has the intellect to figure out that inverse technique. I'm going to go with Mei Mei. Next, we have Iori Hazanoki going up against Miguel. We know Iori is able to use exploding body parts, but Miguel is able to increase his physical attributes with strictly cursed energy. And we know that Gojo once stated that if Miguel and himself were fighting with just cursed energy enhanced on their physical attributes. If it was a marathon, Gojo would win. But if it was a sprint, you gotta go with Miguel. Sakuna going up against Kashimo. We literally did see that matchup and Sakuna won, so gotta go with Sakuna. How about going up against Finger Bearer? This one is weird because Finger Bearers are special grade curses as we know, but then Haba also lost to Itadori without Itadori even going all out. And Itadori was boxing Haba and Hanyu at the same time. Honestly, I think I'm gonna go with the Finger Bearers here. I don't think Haba's that nice. Next we have Kusaka going up against Takaba. Um, clearly, I'm going with Takaba here. Muta going up against Hana. Gotta go with Jacob's Ladder. Yorozu going up against Uraume. Ooh, this one's a weird matchup. I can't picture Uraume hanging in a fight with Sakuna the way Yorozu did. Even though Uraume has insane curse energy and obviously fighting Hakari is insane as well, but Yorozu has impressed me more. Udo going up against Hanami. Personally, I think at this stage in the game, Udo being able to turn the sky into a surface is a much more dangerous technique than Hanami. I'm going with Udo. Hikari going up against Higuruma. I honestly, this is the matchup I don't know. Higuruma, if he's able to access the death penalty on Hikari and he's able to use the Executioner's Sword, that is a problem. But how would it fare against Hikari's domain expansion? Really, what would need to happen is both domain expansions would have to happen and somebody would have to get the edge on the other person's domain. That, I think, is the only only way this would work because if Hikari is able to hit jackpot and he becomes immortal does the executioner sword now become useless those are the tough questions that we have to ask I just think that Hikari has a little better handle on reverse curse technique than Higuruma Higuruma literally was unlocking it and trying to figure stuff out on the fly in his fight against Sukuna talent wise Higuruma wins but presently constructed I think Hikari has a little bit more experience and the conditions in which Higuruma would have to go through just for him to have have access to the executioner sword against Hikari would be insane as well. I think I'm gonna go with Hikari. Itadori going up against Maki. Yeah, these are getting tough. I didn't want to drop Maki off so soon because Maki has been going crazy. Like I said, Maki is Toji 2.0. There should be no hesitation when I say that. But Itadori is turning into a beast right before our very eyes. Him being able to do consecutive black flashes like it's nothing. Him having insane physical capabilities. Him being able to learn techniques on the fly. Him him going through switch training with Kasaka Bay so he's able to use simple domain. All of that is just way, 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 way too much for Maki to deal with, I think, personally. I'm going with Itadori. Daido going up against Kurorushi. I'm just thinking about Daido going up against Yuta, and I think that's light work. I don't think he would have to go through the lengths that he had to go through with Kurorushi to box against him. I'm going with Kurorushi. Yuta going up against Ishigori. We literally did see that. You got to go with Yuta. Panda going up against Yuki. Panda, you had a great run, but 
there's nothing you're doing with a special grade yuki that can literally manipulate mass itself sakuna going up against a finger bearer you had a great run finger bearer that's it sakuna wins miwa going up against toji toji is clapping mei mei going up against kenjaku you gotta go with kenjaku megumi going up against nobara big raga's coming out sorry nobara toge going up against gojo <laughs> the last six or seven matches have just been straight overkill uh gojo is clapping toge noya zenin going up against a smallpox deity you gotta go with noya zenin here miguel going up against maraga oh man all right now it's tough Miguel is able to enhance his physical attributes with curse energy, but Maharaga is the greatest Shikigami of all time. Listen, Miguel was boxing against Sukuna, but I don't know if Miguel was doing enough for me to really say that he beats Maharaga, but I think this is one of the closer matchups that we're going to see. See, me personally, I want to give the edge to Maharaga, but what Gojo stated about Miguel in the sprint is the only thing that's making me hold off for a second. Considering that Gojo had to fight Maharaga and Sukuna at the same time, if I swap Maharaga out for Miguel in that scenario, would Sukuna win faster or no? See, these are the type of mental gymnastics I play in my head in these matchups, man. Um, I'm going to give the edge to Maharaga. This one's tough, though. Hikari going up against Kenjaku. This is a matchup I truly did want to see. The thing with Kenjaku is that he is a mastermind at fighting. It is unbelievable. Kenjaku pulled up, watched Choso, then started boxing with Yuki. All the while, Tengen is doing tricks in the background to dismantle his domain expansion. He tricked Yuki with gravity techniques, even though his power is anti-gravity because he was using it in reverse. His knowledge in battle and his strategy is just ridiculous. Kenjaku is a real fighter in JJK, but Hakari's jackpot is easily one of the most broken moves in all of JJK. He becomes immortal for a certain amount of time, so there's no damage you can really do to him. And on top of that, his cursed energy pretty much never runs out, so he's able to spam moves. It's ridiculous. I'm just thinking, does Hakari have an answer in his arsenal for Kenjaku's domain expansion. I mean, Hikari would probably just have to activate his domain at the same time as Kenjaku. They both have reverse curse techniques, so they're going to be healing. Oh man, this is tough, man. Let me say this. Um, Considering that Yuta was the one that finished off Kenjaku, albeit it was a sneak attack, it still required Yuta to pull it off. Yuta himself has stated that Hikari is stronger than him. Now it's situational, but when Hikari hits the jackpot for that moment in time, he's one of the greatest in JJK. So I think I got to go with Hikari here. Gojo going up against Hana. You got to go with Gojo. Next, we have Yuji going up against Fumihiko Takaba. This one's so tough because as powerful as Yuji is looking right now against Sukuna with the black flashes with the simple domain, Takaba's comedian curse technique is really, really broken. Takaba can literally manipulate reality to the point where he would be able to technically brush off all of Yuji's black flashes if he thinks they're funny. Then he can heal from anything. I mean, I really, really don't know how you stop Takaba honestly. Even though Takaba did technically lose to Kenjaku, we know that Takaba does not like to finish off his opponents. Is that something that Yuji could exploit? I don't know. This one can really go either way. I'm going to go with Takaba though. Udo going up against Kudorushi. Um, I think I'm going to go with Kudorushi here. Megami going up against Noya Zenin. Uh, I think Big Raga coming out. And I just think Megami having a great handle on his domain expansion as well. You got to go with Megami. Sukuna going up against Big Raga. You got to go with Sukuna. Yuki going up against Toji. This is a great matchup. Toji's one of the greatest. Obviously, we saw what he did to Gojo. Great physical attributes. Great at using cursed tools. Maki is the second coming of himself. But if worse comes to worse, Yuki can literally create a black hole. But I don't even think Yuki would have to go there. I think Yuki's handle on mass curse techniques is ridiculous. I'm going to go with Yuki. Yuta going up against Yorozu. This is a really, really great matchup because Yorozu is able to create different things with her curse technique. But Yuta is able to copy abilities of opponents that he's boxed within the past. I personally believe there will be two issues for Yorozu in this type of scenario. One is Rika because Rika is the reason why Yuta has such insane cursed energy because she pretty much is an extra bank of his cursed energy for him while being able to box, while being able to be incredibly strong on her own. But two is that Yuta can copy techniques. There's multiple techniques that Yuta has copied up to this point in the manga. But even if all those techniques did not work, he would be able to copy Yorozu's technique as well. I don't know what she's doing with that. I'm going with Yuta. Yuta going up against Fumihiko. Based on what I just said, can Yuta technically copy the comedian curse technique? I don't know. But considering that Takaba did technically lose to Kenjaku, I mean, it should be Yuta, right? Yuta's second to Gojo. But from a hacks perspective, Fumihiko is just broken. But there's too many what ifs. There's too many what ifs to get him over Yuta for me. 
Gojo going up against Yuki. Yuki's incredibly strong, but this is just a horrible matchup for her. You gotta go with Gojo. Megumi going up against Sukuna. You gotta go with Sukuna, clearly. Hikari going up against Kurorushi. Going with Hikari, no questions asked. Hikari going up against Gojo. Dang, Hikari had a great run, but Gojo is just on a different planet altogether. Yuta going up against Sukuna. Considering that Yuta has to jump Sukuna as we speak, <laughs> you gotta go with Sukuna. And then finally, we have Gojo versus Sukuna. And as we all know, uh, Sukuna is the winner. So all the JJK fans, let me know down in the comment section below what I got right, what I got wrong. Obviously, this was incredibly tough to do because some of these characters are incredible, but sometimes they are in bad matchups. But it is what it is. Don't forget to join the Discord in the description down below. See you guys next time. Peace.